Here I have a sample application that has one of each of the kinds of binding components that can be used in a VCL application. I'll double click on the bindings list and here we have all eight of the components which can be used in a VCL application starting with T-bind expression all the way to T-bind grid link. Let's select all the components to see what the common properties are. Uh, they all have a control component and they all have a source component and they all have auto activate. We set the auto activate property when we want the binding component to automatically set its active property when loaded. We have code to enable the data source. This is here just in case the data source was disabled while designing the application. And then we have a call to bindings list notify. The notify method is called when we want to inform the expression engine that a property has changed and have the expression engine automatically reevaluate any managed bindings. The only components that create managed bindings are T-bind expression and T-bind expression items. Now I'll show the binding components that are used in the sample application starting with T-bind expression. I'll run the application and we have a list box and a label. And what the T-bind expression is doing for us on this page is keeping the label synchronized with the text in the selected list box item. I'll double click on the bindings list component and select the T-bind expression. The auto activate property is set to true. This causes the T-bind expression component to set its active property when it's loaded. The control component and control expression properties and the source component and source expression properties are going to be used to create the binding within the engine. It's going to be a managed binding because the managed property is checked and the direction is going to be source to control. Because the direction is source to control, we're going to have a binding that's going to be assigning from the list box using this expression which concatenates a string with the result of a method called selected text to the caption property of the label. Selected text is a method that we can use in our expression string. Let's go back to the bindings list and show the methods and we can see selected text is listed here. It's a bidirectional method to either get this text selected in a control or set the text selected in a control. So it can be used with a list box. It also happens to work with a grid. We've looked at the uh, source expression and control expression here in the object inspector. There's also an expressions editor which can be used to view the expressions and edit them. We're looking at the T-bind expression in the expressions editor and it shows the control name and the expression and the source component name and expression just as in the object inspector. We can edit the expression here just as we can in the object inspector. There's some buttons at the bottom that allow us to test our expressions. So for example we can click eval source which is going to evaluate this source expression against uh, the scope that contains this component and we get the string selected dash because there is no selected text. We can modify the expression here. Let's just say that we want to display the item index. We'll evaluate that and we see that um, it displays minus one as the item index. Over here on the right are some buttons. We can undo our change by clicking the X. Now let's look at the T-bind expert items component. It is very similar to the T-bind expression component uh, the main difference is that it supports multiple expression strings. Let's take a look at the sample application and you'll see why uh, multiple expression strings are sometimes needed. I'll click on this tab and here we have an, a, another list box and uh, a T-labeled edit component. As the selection in the list box is changed, uh, two things change in the labeled edit. The caption indicates the index and the text of the edit uh, shows the selected text. I'll select the T-bind expert items component to show the properties in the object inspector and we can see that it has auto activate, a control component, and a source component, and a managed flag, but it doesn't include the source expression or the control expression. Let's look at the expression editor for this component and we'll see that 
we have a, something else on the left side, which is a list of expression collections. So there's a format uh, collection which is selected. When we use format in the binding components, we mean that the, it's an expression that's going to assign from the source to the control. So we have two, uh, two expressions assigning from source to control. One expression is the same as we just saw in tbind expression, which is to assign a concatenation of a string literal with selected text. And the other is to assign another string which concatenates a literal with the item index. And we assign that to editlabel.caption. Edit label is a property of the labeled edit component. This component has another collection called clear, which is empty, but this ex collection is used to define uh, expressions to execute before a binding component is deactivated. Now let's look at the T bind position component. The purpose of this binding component is to keep a control in sync with the position of a data source. I'll run the sample to show how it's used. On this page we have a scroll bar and a DB grid. The DB grid is hooked up to a data set and the tbind position is used to link the scroll bar to the data set. So when we scroll using the scroll bar, we're updating the position in the data set, which is also going to update the current row in the db grid. We can move the thumb. We can also scroll in the grid, and the scroll bar will stay in sync. If we hover over the thumb, we can see a hint that indicates what row we're on and how many rows there are in the data set. Now let's look at the tbind position component to see how it's set up. In the object inspector we can see that the control component is the scroll bar and the source component is something called bind scope db1. This is a tbind scope db component. When we expand the source component property we can see that the data source property of bind scope db is set to a data source and that the data source references a client data set. This is the data set that li that's linked to the scroll bar. Let's look at the expressions in the expressions editor. On the left side we can see that there are some collections of expressions. Pause control is the collection of expressions which are executed whenever the position of the data source changes. So these expressions assign to the control from properties in the data set. The first expression assigns from the record count to the max property of the scroll bar. This is so that we can't scroll beyond the last record in the data set. The second expression assigns to the position property of the scroll bar using recno, which is the current record in the data set. The last expression assigns to the hint property of the scroll bar by building a string that includes the record number and the record count. Pause source collection has the expressions which assign from the control to the source so from the scroll bar to the data set. The control expression is the position of the scroll bar which we're going to assign to the recno property of the data set. The pause clear collection is empty. This would be used for expressions that are to be executed when the tbind position component is deactivated. The tbind list component is used to populate a list control such as a tlist box. The tbind list page shows a list box populated with some values from the animal's client data set. In addition to displaying the name of the animal, it's displaying a record number and a weight. Let's look at the properties of the tbind list component. We have a control component, which is the list box, and the source component, which is our bind scope db. Let's open the expressions editor. On the left, we have some collections. We have one called format control. Remember, format is the term we use when assigning from the source to the control. This collection is empty, and so is the clear control uh, collection. Both of these collections are for formatting or, and clearing the control, which would be the list box. But we really don't want to format the list box in the sense that we don't want to change any list box properties. We want to format a list box item. The format collection is for formatting the items. We have one expression in this collection, which is assigning from the source, which is the data set, to the list box item. The control expression is text, which will set the text of the list box item. And the source expression 
creates a string that represents the record number, the name of the animal, and the weight of the animal. The bind list component also has some commands that can be used for additional testing at design time. With the bind list component selected, we can see that the object inspector has a fill list and a clear list command. We'll choose the fill list command, and we can see that it populated the list. We can use the clear list command to clear the list. The next component to talk about is the bind grid list. Let's run our application to see how it's used. On the tbind grid list page, we have a string grid, and the string grid has been populated with the rows from the animal client data set. The first column has the record number, the second column has the name of the fish, and the third column has the weight of the fish. Let's look at the bind grid list component to see how it's set up. We see that we have a control component, which is a string grid, and a source component, which is our bind scope DB. It also has a fill grid and a clear grid command similar to the fill list and clear list command. Let's open the expressions editor for tbind grid list. The format control and clear control collections are just as those in tbind list. After that, instead of another collection of expressions, we have a columns collection. We have one column for every column in the string grid that we want to format. In the object inspector, there's a source member name property. This property is used to specify the field that the expressions in this column will evaluate against. Call format collection is for expressions that will be evaluated to format the column itself rather than individual rows. Here we are formatting the column heading by assigning the field name of the weight field to a cell. The cell format collection is used to format individual rows using the as string method on T field to get the text from the field and then concatenating a string literal and we're assigning it to the third column of the string grid. Now let's look at the tbind link component. The tbind link component can be used with the control to make it behave like a DB aware control. Let's run our sample app to see how it's used. So here we have a regular DB navigator hooked up to a data set and here we have a T label and we've configured a tbind link to make this label behave like a DB text. So as we scroll through the data set, we can see that the T label is updated. It's displaying the name of the animal uh, and the current row and the number of records in the data set. Let's look at how the bind link component is configured. In the object inspector, we see that the control component is referencing a label and the source component is rep referencing bind scope DB. In the expressions editor, there is a format collection and we have one binding expression in the format collection where we're assigning from some formatted text to the label caption. The parse collection is not used in this example. If we wanted to support two-way editing, for example, if we were using a t-edit rather than a label, we would use a parse expression to assign from the control back to the field. The clear collection is used for bindings that we want to execute before the binding component is deactivated. Now I'll move on to the tbind list link component. This component combines the functionality of the bind link, the bind list, and the bind position components. I'll run the sample application to show how the tbind list link component is used. And we have a list box. This list box was populated from the animals data set in the same way that we can populate a list box using the tbind list component. As I click the DB Navigator here, the current row in the data set will change, and we can see that the current row in the list box is also changed. This is similar to the functionality of tbind position. I'll edit the text using the DB Edit. I'll commit that change, and we can see that the line in the list box was updated. This is similar to what we did with the tbind link component, where we updated a label when a field changed. We can also update the weight field, and we can see the update in the list box. Let's look at the bind list link component in the object inspector. We can see that it has a control component, which is the list box, and a source component, which is our bind scope DB. At the bottom of the object inspector, we'll see our fill, fill list and clear list commands, like we saw in T bind list. All of these properties in the object inspector with parentheses around them are collections. We use the expressions editor to edit all the collections at once. The format collection has one expression 
So we're setting the text of the list box item. The pause control collection has one expression which will position the list box to keep it in sync with the current record number in the data set. And the pause source will keep the data set in sync with the current item in the list box. The last component in this sample application is the tbind grid link component. This component is like the tbind grid list component in that it can populate a string grid, but it also includes support for positioning so that it can keep a data set, for example, in sync with the selection in the grid. It also supports parse expressions so that it can support editing of the data by typing into a grid cell. On the tbind grid link page, we have a string grid, and then we have a DB navigator and a couple of DB edits. So as we navigate using the navigator, we can see that the selected row in the string grid changes. And also, if we click on rows in the grid, we can see that the current row in the data set has changed. We can type into the DB edit and change the field. And when we commit the change, we can see that the grid cell is updated. We can also type into the grid and see that the DB edit is updated. In the object inspector, we can see that we have a control component, which is the string grid, and a source component is the bind scope DB1. And we have a couple of uh, commands down here, fill grid and clear grid. Let's look at the expressions. On the left side, we have all of the collections. And many of these will be familiar. Uh, pause control is keeping the current row in the string grid in sync with the current record in the data set. Pause source is keeping the current record in the data set in sync with the current row in the string grid. We have two columns in our collection. Let's look at the name column. In the object inspector, we can see that the source member name is set to name. This is the uh, field name. In cell format, we are writing from the name as string property to a cell. And the cell parse collection has an expression to write from the selected text of the grid to, to the as string member of the name field. So this is the expression that's evaluated after the user has modified a cell and then changed focus or clicked on the post button in the DB Navigator.